Hey guys! Alright, we're going to do anterior and posterior forearm rapid review. Um, yeah, let's get to it. Anterior forearm has three compartments, superficial, intermediate, and deep. Superficial has four muscles. We remember like this. They are, uh, and they all come from the medial epicondyle, they are pronator teres, and then uh, to the shaft of the uh, radius, then you have from medial epicondyle up to the uh, first and uh, the second and third metacarpal heads, that is flexor carpi radialis. Then right here, inserting here, you have the uh, palmaris longus, and that goes to the palmar aponeurosis. After that, right here, you have going to the uh, heads of the metacarpals, the flexor carpi ulnaris, and that is the superficial compartment. Moving to the next compartment. Pause and try and do the intermediate. Great, moving on with the intermediate. You now have um, just one muscle, and that is going to be the uh, flexor digitorum superficialis. Comes up and inserts on either side of the middle of each of the phalanges. So it doesn't operate this last joint, just the middle ones. All right, moving to the deep um, compartment. We have three muscles. One right here, this is going to be the pronator quadratus, okay? One coming from this side, which is the finger side right here, um, shaft of the ulna, that's going to be the flexor digitorum profundus, and that one's going to go in between, you remember how it brand, the uh, superficialis went to either side, the profundus goes just clear to the end, in between that little fork that the superficialis left for it to go through. Profundus will go to the end, flexes. Next, um, we have from right here, thumb side, flexor pollicis longus. All right, shaft of the radius to the tip of the thumb. All right, that's anterior. Hopefully you got that. And now try to do posterior. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and do posterior together. We have seven muscles in the superficial compartment and five muscles in the outcropping. Let's do the superficial. Brachioradialis, from lateral epicondyle, all seven of these are going to be lateral epicondyle. Brachioradialis goes down to the styloid process of the radius. Um, it does not move the wrist. It actually flexes the arm. It doesn't cross the wrist joint. Next, you have the extensor carpi radialis longus and extensor carpi radialis brevis. And those will go to the first, uh, the second and third metacarpal heads, okay? Next, you're going to have the extensor digitorum, and that's going to go to the tips of all the fingers. Extensor digitorum going to the tips of all the fingers. I guess I should just show you guys what I'm doing, right? All right, next, we're going to have the, from the lateral epicondyle, we're going to have the extensor digiti minimi. It will go to the tip of the pinky finger. Next, we're going to have the Extensor carpi ulnaris, it goes to the lateral aspect of the fifth metacarpal, right here, carpal bones, uh, metacarpal bones, all right, so the fifth one. Then our last uh, of the seven muscles is anconius. It goes from lateral epicondyle to the olecranon process, and if that gets smaller, then the way that that's lined up is going to extend the arm. All right, now, Hopefully you got that. Try to do the outcropping. All right, let's hit the outcropping. Outcropping are going to basically be muscles that kind of come out here and then they go up around here. So first we're going to have the abductor, so it moves the thumb out, pollicis. All right, and that's going to go to the um, lateral aspect of the uh, metacarpal right here, and uh, correct me if I do anything that's off, all right? Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and have the extensor pollicis brevis, and that's going to insert right about here, and so that's at the base of the phalange, and you know that it's brevis because it doesn't go all the way to the end. Longus will go all the way to the end, so longus will do this action as well as this action. 
Brevis will only do this action right right here because it does not cross the upper uh, mid thumb joint. Next, we have the extensor indices. Okay, and that's going to go all the way to the tip. And those were one, two, three, four. Oh yeah, number five, supinator. All right. Number five or number one, whatever order you like to do it, supinator is going to come from the posterior aspect of the ulna. It's going to wrap around like a mouth to the front of the radius. And you can see that that would give really good leverage to make your hand go palm up, which is like holding a bowl of soup. So we call it supination. That's not why it's called that, but you can remember it. And hopefully this rapid review has been helpful. Um, stay solid and rock hard.